a young, ambitious, and quite resentful girl whose talent is matched only by her capacity for cruelty. She has a brother that she has quite a fraught relationship with, and she does not know her mother. She has not known her mother for a long time. She adores her father, but the relationship they have is not healthy and mutually beneficial. He is a cruel and uncaring man who largely empowers her worst and most avaricious tendencies. That description could apply to both Claudia in The Dragon Prince and Azula in Avatar The Last Airbender. They are quite similar characters in not just their personalities, but in the functions they serve in the narratives in which they exist. Their minds are cloaked in shadows that slowly deepen as the respective series that they are in progress, leaving them less confident in the basic truth and the basic goodness of what they're committed to, and yet they are so committed that they are unable to deviate from that path, so they continue down that path, continue in to more immoral and more hideous behavior. And yet, these characters aren't the same, are they? Not exactly. Obviously, they're not exactly the same. That's banal to say. If they were exactly the same, the show would be nothing but a ripoff of Avatar. And there are already a lot of Avatar ripoffs. We don't need more of those. Azula and Claudia are afflicted by a malaise that is fundamentally existentialist in nature, I'd argue. They are both people who have this fixed, steady, unchanging idea of who they believe they are and the role they have to play. And gradually that role disintegrates. They lose access to that clear, untroubled, orderly sense of who they are and what they want for themselves. And there is not an easy response to this crisis for either of them. They are lost but they don't want to admit that they're lost. They are too proud to admit that they are lost. Iroh talks quite eloquently in Avatar to Zuko in episode 209, I believe, Bitter Work, that shame and pride are not opposites. Rather, they are one and the same. Pride inevitably comes from shame. Sartre talks about the fatalistic tendency to attempt to project an image of yourself to the world and to yourself and convince everyone that this is who you are. But these images are too narrow. The famous example Sartre uses is of the waiter, who is just a little too committed to the identity of the waiter. He fills that role a little too well. He's a little too obsequious. And this is fundamentally bad faith for Sartre. This is fundamentally abandoning one's basic freedom, the basic burden and responsibility one has to choose one's own identity. And that is a choice that is constantly being made. Azula and Claudia both try to cling on to these rather absolutist and essentialist ideas of themselves, and yet their circumstances conspire to undermine and subvert those clear crystalline conceptions and they do not have a lot of experience with reacting to a sense of not just failure, or not even failure, but a sense of fundamental uncertainty. They are fundamentally set adrift from the people they believe themselves to be, and they do not know how to react to that. 
so they gradually become more resentful. Rage burbles in their souls and their spirits, and they believe that if they just commit themselves even more fanatically to their fathers and to the causes of their fathers, that they will regain that sense of clarity. But this is false. This is absurd. Sartre talks quite lucidly about how we cannot rely on these preconceived roles of who we are. We cannot depend on these fixed and unchanging and atemporal perceptions of ourselves. We are inevitably tied to our circumstances. So, as those circumstances change, so do we. There is no escaping this fate, and to attempt to escape from it is fundamentally delusional. So, aside from basic biographical characteristics, this reluctance to accept the degradation of their former images and conceptions of themselves is what makes them such similar characters. This malaise resulting from a fundamental unwillingness to confront their fates intently and intimately and in full consciousness of their own freedoms to determine their own lives is what causes them such trouble. But they're also not the same person. They're not the same person because Claudia is likely going to attain some sort of a redemption narrative while Azula's story is poignantly tragic. I hear that they are going to craft a sort of redemption narrative for Azula in an upcoming Avatar comic, and I am quite skeptical that this can be done well, because the Azula narrative is not as linear as, say, the Zuko narrative, and even for the Zuko narrative, it took all of this time and all of these seasons and all of these complications and ambiguities that accrue along Zuko's rocky, uncertain, quite enigmatic, misty road to becoming the person he eventually realizes that he always needed to be. That challenge was so poignant and so affecting because they took the time to explore it. I don't think such a narrative for Azula could be crafted perhaps at all, but certainly not in the span of a graphic novel. It's not that I have a problem with Azula being portrayed differently. Azula in Season 3 is portrayed significantly differently from Azula in Season 2. If you go back and rewatch the show, you will realize that. Azula in Season 2 is a more traditional villainess. She is portrayed as a kind of femme fatale, which is uncomfortable considering her age, and it's meant to be, and I think it works quite well. But it is, if not a one-dimensional character portrayal, then still a character portrayal that's limited, and season three is a bit of a corrective to that. It adds these moments of desperation and longing for Azula that make her final tragedy much more affecting. That said, she is still the same basic person. She's still grappling with this essential darkness and misguidedness that she cannot easily overcome. For Claudia, this darkness is easily overcome. Perhaps not quickly, but it will eventually happen. I have no doubt about that after watching season four. She makes the fundamentally crucial decision not to hurt Rayla even more in the back half of season four. And that marks a turn away from the absolute darkness that has threatened to turn her into a rampaging, nihilistic megalomaniac. That doesn't mean she won't continue to err in the future, but it does mean that 
she is probably not going to descend into absolute raging, fervid, frenzied fury like Azula. In Escape from Umber Tor, the final episode of season four, she has these interactions with Terry that are warm and ambivalent, but still positive enough to mark a positive change for her character compared to the obsession we see overtake her when she is talking with Viren in early season four. And yet, all of these more positive aspects of Claudia's character diminish her, I think, to an extent. I don't think positive endings are innately worse artistically than negative ones. I'm not dark and cynical, but I do think that Azula's story is much more disquieting than Claudia's. There is this poignant, ritualistic, quasi-inevitable doom to it, especially in the last few episodes, that is as affecting as anything in Avatar. Claudia's story lacks that level of poignancy. It lacks that deep sense of tragedy. She has committed bad actions, but she has not thrown herself into this feverous desire to fulfill her ambitions at all cost to the extent that there's no going back for her. I thought perhaps that they were going to have her past a threshold where there is no going back, where even if she changes her behavior, she will forever be marked and scarred. But instead, in season four, she's largely as chipper and quirky as ever. There's not that deep level of degradation and decomposition of the psyche that we see with Azula, or even the threat of something like that happening. That's not to say Claudia is a bad character, but I would not quite put her on the level of Azula because of this discrepancy. But tell me what you think in the comments. Anyway, tune in soon for next analysis. It will be coming soon. I promise you that. Thank you all for watching. And uh, there will be more Dragon Prince videos in the future. Don't you worry about that. Adios, comrades.